We're here at Carleton University for the EU Strategic Partnerships Workshop. And it's my pleasure to be with Professor Steven Sabero of the Instituto Tecnológico Autónomo de México. Thanks very much for being with us today. Thanks for, uh, for having me here. I'm pleased to be here. <laughs> Can you tell us why the EU has designated Mexico as a strategic partner? Yeah, I think mm, I think it was obvious uh, for many reasons. First of all, it's the biggest Spanish country in the world, the second biggest country in Latin America, and um, the European Union had already very special relationship with Mexico. It's the most advanced country as far as institutional and trade agreements were signed with the EU. And also because Canada and the United States were already strategic partners, and Mexico is the third country in North America. It's a big country, too. So th all these set of reasons made it almost evident that Mexico would become a strategic partner. Mm. What, makes this a what makes this a special relationship? Uh, there, there are m several reasons. The, the EU is by far the second partner of Mexico after the United States, m much before the other countries in the world. Uh, as I say, we have been pioneers in Mexico as far as institutional and trade relations uh, are concerned with the EU. We are the first one to have signed a global trade agreement with the EU like 15 years ago, uh, much before Canada. Um, the other Latin American countries, and of course, all the set of reasons about you know the culture, the history, the, uh, the, the, the arts, everything that makes Mexico and Europe very close. You know? mm -hmm. And what does this relationship say about the European Union's relations with emerging powers like Mexico? Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, Mexico is a very promising country. It has been for a long time. We hope some, someday the promises would would will realize and uh, it's a very dynamic country it's dynamic not only it's not now a, uh, a mainly raw material exporter it has a big industrial uh, sector and also a big service sector mm -hmm. uh, the economy is not no more based on only on, on oil so I think there are m plenty of opportunities and the fact that Mexico is just in between Latin um, the rest of Latin America uh, in between Central America, the Caribbean, and North America was also a big asset for Mexico, and a lot of Europeans invested in Mexico to then export to the United States and Canada, w with which we also have a free trade agreement. So it, it's a good base to produce, as and because our workforce is not very expensive and it's still qualified compared to most of the con emerging countries in the world, there is a you know, education system, uh, health system, social system that is much better than most countries in the world, although it's not perfect, of course, it's far from being perfect, but still it's a, it's a, good, it's a good place from where to export to the rest of the world. And now with the Pacific also uh, pivots moving uh, there, Mexico is also a big asset because we have a huge, you know, Pacific uh, coast and we uh, could also uh, be an asset to export to, hmm. to. We have already a free trade agreement with Japan, and we are negotiating some more. So, so it's also good. It's a good place to to invest. Uh, plus all these uh, political sides. You know, Mexico was once a leader of the. Uh, not it was never a member of the non-allied uh, countries movement, but it was very close, and it was you know part of the 77 group in the United Nations and it was it is one of the leaders of the emerging countries of the th so-called third world mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, I mean politically socially culturally it's important to have Mexico on your side uh, mm -hmm. if you want to develop some ideas in in the international fora mm. so it sounds like it's um, both an economic and a political relationship between the two sides um, what what's new in the in the EU Mexico partnership? Uh, what's new right this year is that we are negotiating. The partnership is new compared to the relations we have, and uh, we have had a uh, more comprehensive agreement than the partnership agreement. Co contrary to most of the strategic partner, Mexico had already very very close tie. I mean, the Canada, the United States, or Brazil don't have the agreements we have 
in Mexico since 15 years, as I mentioned, like, you know, free trade agreement and a cooperation agreement and a political dialogue agreement and all, all these stuff that are negotiated right now with the rest of North America. Um, Brazil is not even mm, close to that. So the strategic partnership really is not the main uh, axis of our relationship compared uh, as, as opposed to what it is for other strategic partners, which is uh, interesting. And what is new is that we are renegotiating now other agreements such as the trade agreement, investment uh, uh, agreements, agriculture, things like that, that we had already, but we are renewing it. And it's interesting, it's an interesting moment for in, in this renegotiation. And certainly the fact that we are now a strategic partner should help us to negotiate all these agreements. For example, Mexico is not considered anymore by the EU as a developing country. Mm -hmm. So we need other structures and frameworks to have some you know, preferential agreement with the EU and the strategic partnership could be one of these uh, uh, f preferential framework. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's next? What's coming up for the relationship yeah, and it's the renegotiation of these agreements, as I told, uh, as, uh, as I just mentioned, and also the fact that the game is changing a little bit for Mexico now that Canada and the United States are negotiating the same agreement. So we'll see what happens with these two countries, and we'll see if our agreement is complete enough or it would have to be changed to take into account what's happening with the United States, for example, which is by far our main partner and which probably was one of the main incentives for the EU to have a trade agreement with Mexico. So we'll see what happened. And this, these are several big challenges ahead. Now, first of all, renegotiating the, the, the global agreement we have had since, uh, since uh, 2000. And then to take into account the TT, TTIP, the, this one, the, the, the agreement that the transatlantic uh, tr the trade, the transatlantic partnership that the EU and the United States are negotiating. Uh, it's a big challenge and to see what's what will happen and if Mexico will benefit or will be a little bit uh, affected uh, by better relationships with between the EU, US and Europe, which I guess is the same type of challenges that Canada has to face now. Mm -hmm. Professor Sabero, thank you so much for your time. It was my pleasure.